Hi, everyone. My name is Shannon Kippett Smith. My preferred pronouns are she, her. I'm the scholarly communications liaison at Fondren Library, Rice University in Houston, Texas. My presentation today is titled, Listening to Our Community. What does DEI and library publishing look like to you? If things go as planned, I will be able to provide links and slides and related project materials while this recording is played during the forum and or during the Q&A. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge support from the Fondren Library Fondren Fellows Program and the work of undergraduate fellow Alyssa Beal Spiro. The image on this slide includes the OWL Fondren Fellows logo against an image of Fondren Library. As I'll describe later, Alyssa is currently working on data analysis. Hopefully, she will have opportunities to present and or publish findings and recommendations in the near future. This session will share initial reflections on a project intended to identify ways the library can center diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI, in the library's publishing services. The objectives of this presentation are to understand why diversity, equity, and inclusion are important in library publishing, and to identify strategies for engaging community members on issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. In the next 10 minutes or so, I will briefly describe the Bonnier Library Publishing Services and why we think DEI is a critical component of this work and provide an overview of our project with some initial thoughts and reflections. To better understand why we pursued this specific project, I think it might be helpful to provide a bit more background about our publishing services in DEI and library publishing. Publishing services at Fondren Library support the library's strategic goal to deepen the impact and visibility of race research. This slide includes a screenshot of a portion of the publishing services webpage. Various resources and programming related to scholarly publishing have been developed by library staff over the years, but were often promoted individually. The Library Publishing Services Initiative was an attempt to bring together these various activities to better communicate to the rice community our range of tools and services and to guide development of future activities. We provide consultations on a wide range of scholarly publishing topics, facilitate the assignment of DOIs, and manage several digital publishing platforms, including an institutional repository and OJS. As we fleshed out the services that would be included in our publishing initiative, we referred to the University of Minnesota's publishing business plan as a model for communicating what we currently offer and serve as a foundation, serve as a foundation for planning future development. I have included a link to the Minnesota Publishing Business Plan that was shared during a previous publishing forum in the resources slide. We also drafted a set of publishing services principles listed on this slide to guide the development of current and future publishing services. Reflecting the library's mission, the core principles of Fondren's publishing services are. We believe Fondren can serve as a central resource for publishing services on campus. Wherever possible, these services should be offered without charge. We provide consultation, services, and tools to help members of the rice community navigate the complex scholarly publishing environment. We seek to develop partnerships on and off campus. We encourage innovation and experimentation in scholarly publishing, grounded in widely used standards and practices, as well as library values. We support the development of publications that address disciplines and scholars underserved in the current scholarly publishing environment and provide access to publishing platforms for under-resourced groups. We use open source software when available and appropriate and support tools and resources that further open access publishing. When outlining current library publishing services, we recognize the importance of DEI and included language about DEI and anti-racism in the description of services informed by contemporary discussion and literature. Unfortunately, I don't have time during this session to really dig into the work being done related to DEI and anti-racism in library publishing, but I will point to the 2018 Library Publishing Coalition Ethical Framework for Library Publishing, because I think it provides a good starting point for better understanding some of the ways why DEI is important in this work. I know a newer version of the framework is forthcoming. I think it reflects the evolution of conversations about DEI in the library publishing community in recent years. The 2018 framework highlights the importance of publishing in an academic career and how, quote, the quality and impact of a faculty member's research program is judged primarily through the quantity of publications and perceptions of value assigned to their publication venues. Systemic inequities in academic publishing can make it difficult for authors from marginalized identities 
though they're defined by ethnicity, gender, geography, language, nationality, race, or other identity, from making contributions to the scholarly record. These inequities create obstacles for faculty from marginal, marginalized groups for continuing and advancing in their careers, unquote. The framework then goes on to read, quote, as a developing sector of publishing, library publishers have the ability to intervene and reduce the impact of bias in content selection and create hospitable environments for a diversity of identities, viewpoints, and approaches, unquote. The framework also offers several possible approaches to diversity work in library publishing, including diversifying the library publishing workforce, making publishing systems and outputs widely accessible, and quote, using library publishing to increase the diversity of voices and formats represented in the scholarly record, unquote. Incorporating ideas from the framework in additional literature, we drafted the following statement, which appears on this slide. It reads, as Fondren Library's publishing services expand, it is imperative that services and programming are selected, in part, for their role in promoting equity, inclusion, and diversity in scholarly communications. This focus naturally aligns with one of the core principles of Fondren's publishing services, which is, we support the development of publications that address disciplines and scholars underserved in the current scholarly publishing environment and provide access to publishing platforms for under-resourced groups. It is around this statement that the project titled Listening to Our Users, Centering DEI and Library Publishing Services was developed. Most of this work occurred in fall 2022 and spring 2023. Through a series of focus groups, this project was intended to identify the ways the library can center DEI in the library's publishing services. Although library staff are knowledgeable about the current state of scholarly communication, we acknowledge that often members of the rice community better understand and experience the numerous challenges faced by authors in today's scholarly publishing environment. So rather than develop a set of services and resources informed by what library staff perceive to be user needs, this project was intended to take a step back and ask participants questions related to the diversity statement. This approach was informed by conversations during the fall 2022 Spark Knowledge Equity Discussion Series. Focus group participants were asked what they think the statement means and what the library should do about it. Rather than craft questions around what we think people might be interested in or concerned about, sessions were designed to allow participants to guide discussion. This slide provides a general overview of the project's workflow. We secured IRB approval for this project. Copies of the consent form, interview questions, and recruitment email template can be found in a public Google folder. I'll include a link on the resources slide. We also secured funding to provide each focus group participant a $25 prepaid Visa gift card. We did struggle a bit with recruitment, wondering if we should have sessions specifically for underserved and underrepresented groups or more general sessions. We reached out to a Rice Psychology faculty member who does quite a bit of DEI research and were advised to think about participation backwards. That is, how would we know that we did a good job with our focus groups? What would be a measure of success? Would it be represented by new ideas, by having a lot of diversity presented in the people who show up for the focus groups? If our desired outcome was both, it was recommended that we seek broad participation from grad students, faculty, and staff. However, if diversity isn't present in those who we recruit or serve naturally, we may want to consider more targeted recruitment. Unfortunately, we don't have a clear understanding of who our users are, and I'll speak a bit more about this later. So we decided to go with more general sessions, two for each of the following groups, graduate students and postdocs, faculty, and staff. All sessions were in person. However, it was pointed out that we should also have planned for remote sessions because they may open up more opportunities for participation from disabled and or neurodiverse rice community members, as well as those who work remotely. In March, we facilitated a total of five focus group sessions with a total of five graduate students, two faculty, and nine staff members. We actually received more interest from staff than we had slots available, so we had to turn some people away. However, we do have a few gift cards left over, so we may try to host an additional session or two this summer. Focus group participants represented a wide variety of disciplines and campus units. For each session, we read the publishing DEI statement and asked two questions. One, what do you think the statement means? And two, what should the library do about it? Then we asked a series of snowball questions. That is, we asked questions that naturally arose from the discussion. Sessions were audio recorded, 
and we were able to use Quadrant Fellows funds to pay for transcriptions. We're currently in the data analysis stage of the project, using open coding as a first step in identifying common concerns, questions, and suggestions. So while I can't provide the final report of this project and final recommendations, I do think I can provide some initial thoughts and reflections. First, we need to better understand our current users and their needs. Who currently uses library publishing services? How do we currently connect with them? Is diversity currently present in the work we do? A number of focus group participants asked who our users are, and I must admit that I was surprised by my response, which is we really don't have a clear idea of who our users are or who we hope to serve. As with many of our library services, we have taken a very broad, capture as many users as possible approach that in this case may actually be missing potential users. When we have a better understanding of who our current users are, we may be in a better position to seek feedback from those not served or supported. We also need to increase awareness and communication across campus. Several focus group participants explained that they weren't sure if they could fully comment on DEI and publishing services when they weren't even sure what the services are and what they're designed to do. While this isn't specific to DEI work, it is clear that part of the work we need to do in coordination with additional work on identifying users is to do a better job of communicating services and their benefits to users. And thirdly, we received some feedback that the language in our statement and description of our goals around DEI work seems very performative and filled with current popular DEI keywords and top talking points. Even though we are seriously interested in centering DEI and anti-racism into our publishing services, it's clear that we are still falling short in our approach. Even though we had tried to avoid it, it was pointed out that it still seems like we are approaching DEI as a problem to be solved rather than doing the work to break down barriers and bias and truly demonstrate how we live our professional values. So I think moving forward, an additional data analysis may offer further direction. We need to really think about our underlying library and publishing services values and think about how they inform the work we do to truly center DEI. As one participant pointed out, demonstrating how you incorporate your values is much more productive and meaningful than just having some language buried in a document or on a web page that doesn't have any action tied to it. This slide includes a number of the resources I've referenced throughout the presentation. And again, I'll hopefully be able to provide a link to the slides and resources during the Q&A. And finally, I welcome questions and comments. Feel free to ask during the Q&A or reach out to me via email. Thank you.